So the other thing I wanted to touch on, I had a couple questions about it, was um, how I was how to use Easy Link, <clears throat> Easy Link, I guess, um, and how to diagnose with Easy Link because um, again, this is something I learned pretty quickly once I started having problems. But it's actually really convenient and really um, it actually goes pretty in depth in terms of diagnosis. So, um, what we're, what you're going to do, I guess, is run what's called the data log. And I, I don't actually think I can, I can't show you how to run them right now because I'm obviously I'm not connected to my, um, vehicle. Cause this is the screen you obviously your dashboard and then you have all those, uh, module or little squares and shit that come up. Um, so what I am going to show you, though, is just the, the useful information that I find when you're uh, diagnosing things. Like, because obviously you, we use this to figure out that there's my pump wasn't making any pressure at all. So um, road. Fi so let's go to a dyno one. Fifth power sitting at the dyno. Sure. Play data log. So this was a minute long. and. First, before we get too far, oops, pause, there we go. Um, <clears throat> these are the things that I that I like to view because throttle position, that obviously tells you when you're giving it the full sauce. This is, this is I guess, specifically when trying to figure out um, pump issues, which I think is going to be a most, most common situation. But when you're when you have your when you have it at wot um obviously your throttle position is going to be 100 percent. that's when you know you're trying to give it the sauce that's when you know um you should be at full 29,000 psi of uh, injection pressure obviously the other way you can tell down here is with the injection pressure d which is desired um that's going to read whatever you're requesting which obviously at wide open throttle will be again twenty nine thousand psi. <clears throat> um, actual. This is the biggest. This is the biggest one. The in my for diagnosing um, pump stuff. Uh, actual injection pressure A. Actual desired. Actual. Obviously they should be right next to each other uh, in a ball in in the ballpark. Um, so. The other boost pressure. This is not <clears throat> not too useful when it comes to what kind of uh, of boost pressures that a lot of the highly highly modified guys are, are gonna see. Like for me, it doesn't really do anything because it tops out the MAF sensor on the truck itself uh, tops out at forty two point six, I think psi, and I, we're uh, way above that. Um, the other one I like is. This exhaust manifold pressure, this is where you'll see, this is your drive pressure. Um, and for me, it's really high, uh, which is not good. Um, airflow, it's a good thing. Um, I don't know, I don't know a hell of a lot about these last two that I have on here, to be honest with you. So if anyone, uh, please let me know what, I mean, injection quantity desired. So that's, well, okay. So injection quantity is, is obviously cubic millimeters. Um, so that's just flow rate. Um, but I don't know what changes from like pump to pump or, or what we'd be looking for there. I, but I mean, I don't know, whatever, maybe, maybe it's useful. And then vein position. I think I could get something else in there, uh, that would be <clears throat> more useful. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, I don't, I don't usually like looking at this screen. I prefer the graph, um, just because then I can see, you can highlight, like, different shit. So, you could highlight all these. And I don't know why these, though, the, those three on top always are the ones that get um, illuminated, but that's what we want to see right there, is, or, at, for the first diagnosis, that's what we want to see. We want to track the desired and the actual rail pressures, along with the throttle position. Um, because as you can see, they should, 
follow each other, but as soon as we're approaching W-O-T, you're going to see this injection fracture actual, the blue, light blue, bam, 9,000 PSI. So this is kind of what I should have showed in that other, when we were at the dyno, this is, I should have gone more in depth on this, and I apologize for not doing that. Um, I just put that picture up, because... Yeah, it's nice to be able to see how this thing progresses and to be able to see the how clear the problem would see I mean right at, right in the middle here 29,000 psi of 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 actual oh shit hold on there we go of uh, desired sorry not actual desired injection pressure um actual injection pressure uh what do we got 10,000 10,600 PSI. And wide open throttle. So, you can see, and then this is exhaust manifold pressure, which... The the rule of thumb here, too, um, is... Wait. That can't be right. That the boost... So, you got tracking the boost pressure versus the um, exhaust manifold pressure. In an ideal scenario... You'll, you should have more boost pressure than you do um, exhaust man uh, drive pressure. You, you want to be scavenging that as fast as possible be, be just because that is going to increase your, uh, your heat in everywhere, heat everywhere, and also you're going to have a ton more um, cylinder pressure because of that. You're having trouble scavenging that exhaust out of the cylinders because it's so backed up. Um, and again, for a lot of these guys who want to do compounds um, and your goal, that's why in my last video I said I would do just a single modified VGT because th that's going to give you the least amount of drive pressure if someone, if you get one with a, with a high flow turbine um, rather than going compounds because that stock VGT, it's good, not great. Really pretty restrictive. Um, and that's why I'd say if you can get that thing out of there, because that's, that's my plan. Um, so, well here, so let's get these other ones out of here. So, well, actually, you know what we should do is go to, go to one where we had a good pull. I think this is a, yeah. So let's play this one, graph, unhighlight those. Oh shit, hold on. Pause that. So... This is going to be one where I think the pump is working properly. Let's just make sure. Yeah, so if you, you can tell here. Here, throttle position. Right up here, it's going to be, yeah. So right now, coming right there. Stop. 29,000 PSI of actual injection pressure. 29,000 PSI um, of desired pressure. Throttle position, 199, but you get the point. Um, so the, it's working well here. So now it's kind of a short pull, which sucks because I wanted to see boost pressure. Yeah, 42 and a half, 42. I thought it was 42.6, but exhaust manifold floor pressure. <whistles> Skyrocket. Oh, sorry, Sig. <laughs> Scared Sig there with the old whistle. Um, it's, it's through the roof. So this is not good. This is not good. Um, yeah, that's not what you want to see whatsoever. Uh, let's see if we can find a... A longer one. Fifth gear. Third gear. I think fifth gear is going to be the longest. Graphs. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so here again, the pump is working properly at this one. Okay. All right. So go back to here. Boost pressure. Exhaust manifold. Yeah, see the same thing. It's the same 70-something PSI. That's huge. That's a huge difference, and it's not good. That's kind of good for making power, because that's, that's, I think, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it's parasitic power loss, because when you're, when your cylinder's coming down, and it's trying to exhaust that gas, 
it's pushing up so it's it's reverse it, it's the opposite direction of your drive your drive stroke is down obviously all you guys know this drive stroke power stroke is down and then as you're exhausting that gas it's it's struggling to push that out you're losing power so it's just never good it's not ever going to be good you're losing power to try and drive that gas out of there and that's a loss of power so one of the bigger takeaways here is get that exhaust out of there if you can however you got to do it get that exhaust out of there and the second thing is well the main thing i guess actually is how to use this at easy link to be able to diagnose what you got going on because this told me a world of things that i i was just guessing at before and now i have the data i mean so listen here's a one grain of of salt to put in what i've been saying this whole time that is not the actual boost pressure if it were the actual boost pressure we'd have a huge problem the actual boost pressure i'm assuming is like 50 50 something which is still not good um because like i said this tops out at 42 and a half or 42 i thought it was 42.6 we'll go 42 and a half psi um yeah not good um because even if it is 50 something we want to get that at least closer to being at least even because with a compound setup you're always going to have more uh drive pressure because you got two turbines to spin and again that's why i said if your goal is 750 horse get a modified stock vgt a stock modified vgt whatever you want to say everybody's making them um high flow turbine 66 millimeter compressor wheel get something that's gonna that's gonna get that exhaust out of there um yeah toss a modified pump in and you're all set so if i miss anything i do apologize but yeah i mean you can see them here too that's why i have the boost pressure and the exhaust manifold pressure right next to each other these two right here so here we go yeah i mean again the boost pressure topped out but not good not great let's see what the mass airflow grams per second 558 grams per second without comparison it doesn't really help us that much but yeah i mean this thing's a, a very useful tool use this shit it's really it really is useful